Welcome to Let Us Explain on Intercut, the completely sporadic and unscheduled Intercut supplement where we go all in on a piece of TV, movies, or entertainment that people can't cut away from. I am your co-host, Zachary Shevich, and joining me, are we just going to ignore the bear? It's Arturo Zarita and Alina Montemayor. You know, she actually let me know that there was a, uh, A24 was selling the bear. They were. Yeah, Dude, we... Uh, we spent I was pretty... the entire day making fun of Stranger Things for their product <laughs> placement. And then, I, and then I said, they're selling the what? <laughs> we tried getting it. <laughs> yeah, but in true A24, yet. like, you can't, it's exclusive fashion. There were only 75 of them available. Why even exactly. make that? Exactly. And then they did a second wave, but they didn't let you know unless you kept clicking on oh, it when yeah. it said sold out. So that means yeah. they didn't have 75. They had more. It doesn't matter. We don't have a bear. Nobody owns a bear here. Yeah. There is none whatsoever. But we're excited to be here. Uh, talking about the movie that most couples are too scared to go see. Together. <laughs> yes, We've seen it uh, twice. The, the consensus coming out of film Twitter uh, following the release of Ari Aster's Midsummer was basically, your relationship better be in a good place if you're mm. going to go see this with your significant <laughs> other. Uh, speaking of which, I believe you two have seen this movie together twice. And already. read the twice. script together. Yeah, and script. Uh, the divorce has been finalized. <laughs> yes. And other than that, we, we're really moving forward, <laughs> forward with everything. She gets half of the workload. <laughs> that I used to continue on. Let me explain. And everything works out great. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, the thing is, here on Let Us Explain, we deep dive on something that we can't stop thinking about for other people who can't stop thinking about that thing, too. That means we'll be talking about anything and everything, including spoilers. So you might want to wait until after you've seen Midsummer to watch our segment or not, if that's your thing. But before we jump into the spoiler zone, let's talk a little more generally about Midsummer. Filmmaker mm -hmm. Ari Aster, this is his follow up to last year's Hereditary. Midsummer is a deeply uncomfortable melodrama juxtaposed the beautiful backdrop of a Scandinavian summer. When a group of friends visit a remote Swedish village to observe their midsummer festival, their trip gradually becomes more bizarre and violent. It's being pitched as a horror movie, but it feels like something far more specific than that art. Is horror a good term to use when describing midsummer? Yeah, horrible things happen. I, I would say if you're in a horrible relationship, you can see that as a horror. Uh, not this relationship is what she's saying about. It's a completely <laughs> no, different uh, other relationship. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, so I think the thing is what Ari came out and said was that he didn't see, like we've been watching a lot of interviews with him and he's mm -hmm. like, I never even intended to make a horror movie first. Like mm -hmm. the next movie that he wants to make is, is a comedy, but I think that there's horror elements to it. Kind of like when Jordan Peele makes a get out and then his follow up is a horror movie, but people are like, Oh, it's about race relations. And he's like, well, it can be. So, right. you know, it's like one of those things. Maybe someone watches Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and goes, that's, no, that's a, that's a horrendous movie. Like, that's scary to me. So I think it, it works at both. Uh, every time we've gone to go see the movie, I've stood by the aspect of it that if you go see this with your girl or significant other, whoever that is, that's one thing. You go see it with the girls. That's a whole other movie. You go see it with the boys. I have seen different reactions all across the board. The last time we saw it was with a with these four ladies who went on a girls' night out. Oh yes, that was my audience. That was my audience. It really was. The amount of mm -hmm that we heard, <laughs> it almost made us feel bad for whatever situation they were in. You felt their pain. But yeah, no. It's do you not see it as a horror movie? Do you feel like we've is it because we're so used to horror movies being quote unquote bad and not respected that when a movie is so good, we're almost looking down on the genre? Uh, there certainly is a bit of like elitism, like the whole elevated mm -hmm. horror term that we throw around where it's like, yeah. well, it's a horror movie, but it's actually good. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> not really it's what I'm trying to do. One of the good ones. By, that's really not what I'm trying to do by like, asking whether or not this is horror. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard also some interviews with Ari Aster where he's talking about how this is really like, a, it is a melodrama first and foremost. And one of the key elements of a melodrama is, is that the movie plays as big as the emotions are. And yeah. when we're talking about uh, the types of emotions that would be forced upon you in this situation, we get like big, 
crazy, potentially horrific things happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, it is sort of like this fine line of, you know, I, I don't know if I would classify it as a drama drama before I classify it as a horror. It's probably like closer in that respect. But I almost think that's too general. Like you have to be a little bit more specific. It's such a like a mood piece. It's such yeah. a it, it's so much about that feeling and those feelings of when you're in a troubled relationship and when uh, it, things just are you, you need support. You're not getting it. You, you're trying to communicate something and you don't have that uh, partner in that. I, I think he's able to craft those moments so well that are deeply uncomfortable. But I don't know if I personally want to describe them as horror. Yeah. Me, well, and no, th- for me, maybe that's just there. because I don't want people to go into it with the wrong expectation. This and then you're there and people Friday come out the and they 13th. go, that wasn't as scary as Hereditary. I didn't pay for a horror movie. Yeah. Horror sometimes is slasher. Yeah, you know tropes. Oh, well, yeah, and things. this isn't Friday the Thirteenth. This isn't Nightmare it's on Elm Street. It's all in daylight, which is a very dope way to go mm-hmm. about a horror movie. Uh, but it's interesting that you bring that up because originally it was a it was a Swedish company, Be Real Films, sister company to to Be Real Films, Zach. Okay, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, uh, this company in Sweden came up to him a, a years ago and they said, "Can you make like a Swedish like?" Can you make can you make Sweden look as terrible as possible? <laughs> Love Sweden, and he was like, I don't really like. I he said he had never done anything for hire, according to his interviews, and he said that he had gone through a breakup, and on a second breakup, which has been the funniest thing to see in the interviewers, everyone just hound him about. So I heard you were in a breakup, and as a filmmaker, you express yourself through your films. Tell us about that. He's like, I just did. It's called Midsommar, rated R in theaters now. Poor guy's been having to hear that over and over. But it's interesting to, to hear that he went through a breakup. Didn't write it down, though. Mm-mm. You know when you go through that breakup and you're like, mm, it's like you just saw a Jackie Chan movie and you want to do you, you want to do some action right there. He had broken up and he had all these emotions, but he didn't write them down. Then he got into a second breakup. And at that point, he took the job and he said, his literal quote is, how can I masquerade, take this money for this bitch <laughs> and really make it a breakup film? So when you say you don't really see it as a horror, but you see it like, Again, what I call the eternal sunshine. I see mm-hmm. it as a lot of other breakup movies. As someone's great from this year. This is the alternative yeah, version yeah. of that. The same way that you can see Hereditary as just a dysfunctional family. But if you see a dysfunctional family, you're like, oh, that's goofy, that's funky. He's like, yeah, but what's that emotion you feel? Yeah, that's right. It feels like a possession, right? right. I left my sister at school, but my mom treated me like, <laughs> other stuff happened I'll say if you haven't seen Hereditary and it's the same thing here it's that idea of like when you're can we go full spoilers since this is a let us explain yeah uh, we'll do we'll open this up to spoilers so if you can't handle the truth this is the time to click out there are plenty of spoiler free intercut episodes on this feed for you to watch uh, but if you want to dive right in go ahead how you fork is that ending it is really and I- let me just add this before we go on is it more of a horror or how do you even put this into words where it's so close to real life minus the whole you know rituals and the Mm, killing yourself you know maybe it is there who knows but as far as everything that they go through as a couple because it's so real that is the horrific part of it yeah Yeah, so let me let me ask you guys this then uh because ari aster has this habit of inflicting brutal moments on his characters and then forcing you to kind of live with them through these reactions you know there's that moment in the film where an older couple jump to their deaths and i feel like it was this movie's version of the uh telephone pole scene in hereditary Mm -hmm. so so what do you feel like of what do you think of a moment like that as the device for horror it's not the way we traditionally get horror in that it's the impact that scares you. It's really seeing how these people respond that's scary. Yeah, I, I, don't I can know see if you that. Have something else. To add to well, that. I mean, going based off that in the movie, I mean, going based off the movie, you know, we see the 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 English couple who completely freaked out. It's almost as if they used that part of their ritual as kind of like a filtering, like a sifting. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can't handle that, then you're not gonna be able to handle yeah, anything else. You can't handle right. anything else that we do as a community together. But you can see how each person individually reacts. And the only person that kind of just stands there and just watches the entirety of it is Danny. Mm-hmm. She really is the only one to survive. And what's interesting about it is 
that suicide, which yes. in their culture is normal, it's like it's almost yeah. looked upon. They got to yeah. eat at the head of the table that day. Right. Though that that uh, that suicide that was uh, what's the word? They were pro pro for it. They were for it. Like it's part of their cycle. Yeah, right. that's like the word I'm looking for. Like it was normal to them. It's the movie ritualistic. starts exactly. It's ritualistic. Mm-hmm. It's something they do. It's part of their tradition. Mm-hmm. Right, and you juxtapose that with the to the beginning of uh, Danny's yes. sister, exactly. who takes her parents with them, and it, it, it's just it's this completely the way alternate he finds, way, yeah, a way to, to maneuver approach all death. That I think it's insane. I know one of the things uh, that you were touching upon earlier, and I know that was one of the stuff that stood out to her the most okay. when we first saw it was all of the lines. What are what are when we talk about Ooh. our favorite parts of Midsommar, Do you want to know what they are? It's not the butterfly ripped open Jeepers Creepers skin guy. It's not even the Athopus what whatever it is. Yeah. Our favorite part about the goriest scenes are the reactions around it. That right. which is Cheaty learning that he knows what it is and he yes. keeps it quiet, <laughs> even though he just he knows mm-hmm. that his friend, her parents just died because of her sister's suicide. And he's like, I'm not going to say anything. Right. Yeah. That's a terrible thing to do. And in the script, he's even worse. In the script, he has lines about being pro-rape. Mm-hmm. Crazy things. Yeah, it's an insane... Well, we might get to some of that stuff. But some of our favorite lines, what are some of yours? It has nothing to do with horror. Nothing to do with What's horror. What's one of your favorite lines I, from Christian? Okay. Wait, hold on. He says he can guess it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. The one that comes to my mind is Danny's having a conversation with Pele because it's her birthday and Christian forgot. And she responds. And the entire audience, we were watching it the second time... They did all as a collective, like they reacted. They're just as mad. Because she then says, Oh, I forgot to remind him it's okay. Which Zach, you know no. how Zach, you know how sometimes like they don't remind you? Yeah. Like whose birthday yeah. is it, Zach? You know? Yeah. There's that scene. I, there's this one scene that she to hates. remember the dates of <laughs> right? another if person. She doesn't tell Bruh, me. <laughs> there was one point where I was gonna be like, Oh, you know, maybe he was busy. Then they say they say, how no, long, how long no, have y'all no, no, been together? No, 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 no. You, Four no, years and you, two weeks. I was like, going too far ahead. two weeks? You're going too far ahead. Well, you're going to say the best one. We got to say the best one for last. No, it's part of the birthday thing. What? Then he comes out with a little birthday cake trying to light the candle. He's like, you oh, thought I forgot. It. You know? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and clearly Pele gave her the cake. He's literally yeah. having a conversation going, you know, in case you forgot, whatever else. And sure. then he goes up to her. And then she noticed her, uh, what do you call it? Meaning to it. Her ending explained was the spark. Oh, I'm not even getting to that. He's like, I thought it was yesterday. So you don't even try to be like right in the morning, say happy birthday. You ever say something and it sounds even dumber? They cut your ticket and they say, enjoy the movie. You go, you too. They're on a clock. Like you sound so dumb saying that. It was, yeah. it was that thing. It was Alina noticing. It's like, it's almost like oh, the yeah. spark was gone. The spark you between get them it up. could not. Uh, Gets it up later, but right. you couldn't like, get it up right a, there. Throughout the movie, there's like only a certain level of, uh, effort that Christian's willing to go for through for Danny. Like sometimes he's not even really willing to remember the have a conversation with her when she be- wants yeah. to. Uh, the for me, the, the moment. Well, go ahead, go for, ahead, go ahead. For me, the moment that's burned into my brain uh, is after uh, I forget the name of the British guy who uh, after he leaves and they're sitting at the table together. They have that moment of silence and she oh, she goes. I could see you doing that. I could see you do that. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah. Dude, so I had told you, I don't know, maybe I had told you we were sitting next to a couple who, when the whole movie was going on, the dude just kept going, yo, Danny sucks. What a hoe. She's so annoying. A girlfriend was just sitting there going like, didn't say anything until that line. I could see you doing something like that. She couldn't help it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looked over like what? Did you say? Well, did you need to go to the bathroom? Well, let's let's get to uh, Florence Pugh actually because she's yeah, the center of this film. Does a really incredible job. What what did you think of her performance? She is the next. I don't know, but she's becoming my favorite actor. Kate this Winslet. Is the she's the next Kate Winslet. No, no, she's the next Kate Winslet. Forget Vikander. She's the next Kate Winslet. And it turns out, uh, Kate Winslet is one of her favorite uh, Actress. artists. Right. Yeah, actresses of all time. Yeah. Actors. And in one of the when we were rewatching it the second time and seeing with a bunch of her movies, she hasn't even seen uh, Lady Macbeth, Lady Macbeth or, or that new one, Outlaw King. Is she an Outlaw, Outlaw King? King, yeah, dude, her acting. It's partly in her eyes, but she does a lot of acting with her nose and her, the, mouth. her mouth. This whole yeah. area right here, the way she can just act, like on the phone, 
There's a reason why I already said on the script, just keep it on her. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. she does all her acting there. It's incredible. Yeah, she's she's captivating in this role. Uh, and she's just got a way about her that you kind of you you're lost reading her face. You're trying yeah. to like process the emotions alongside her because she's going through so moment? much yeah. in this movie. It's like she goes uh, from like you're to blame. No, it's me. And it's like, oh, why'd you go there? Yeah, yeah. She's even, so, so good. Even her cry, I don't know if you noticed it on your watch, but, like, the type of cry Lena she has. Lena has a list of, like, top criers of all time. <laughs> no, but, like, her the way there, she, there's like, like, really a, cry like that. Uh, she sounds like she's having, like, a respiratory failure or yeah. something at one point. You know she's thinking but about something. But in a good way. And it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in, the, in a way that's, like, wow, you are really going for yeah. it. You're there. She's... Full yeah. crying. Yeah, it's yeah. like she had a relationship, made it go sour in order to be able to relate with this movie. That's how into it she was. Yeah. May I speak about uh, our feminist of the year? Hmm. Jack? Is that his name? Who? What's Christian's name? The actor's name? <laughs> oh, uh, Rainer? Jack Rainer? Oh, Jack Rainer, yeah. Rainer. Um, I hate him in everything that he's in. I've always thought he comes off as this character right here. And he's a really nice guy. I've never seen his interviews. He's actually a very nice guy. He did the tours with with Ari, and he's he's really dope. I've never mm-hmm. liked any of his characters, from Sing Street as the brother to like uh, Delivery Man. I hated him in Transformers. <laughs> Great guy, I'm sure in real life. Finally, the perfect role. Yeah, you know the quote yeah. we say the most to each other. Anything what? happens. Any of us are in the bad in a bad mood. You want to know how we get out of it? Uh, I'm sorry. Like, there's a scene at the beginning where he says that line. Yeah. And that's probably the one that gets the most groans out of everybody, second to the one that you had brought up about the I can see you doing that. Mm -hmm. Dude, the way he says I'm sorry is like you could not give less of a care. Yeah. It's insane. It's it's like a hostile I'm sorry. I'm I can't believe you're making me say these words. And I can't even get mad at her because I'll say something. I was like, so you just didn't get the edit right. And then she goes, oh, sorry I didn't read your mind. I'm sorry i was like i can't even be <laughs> mad at that uh so bringing up some of the other actors you know i thought william jackson harper was great will poulter is becoming like one of our essential cinematic douchebags yes i'm gonna uh, send you a meme that alina sent me but keep going the, the toy story one i laughed very hard at that uh, one you already know it then yeah, pop it like... up right here it, that's incredible yes it's it's that's so art apt. imitating art <laughs> Uh, w- was there anybody in particular, aside from Florence Pugh, who you thought was really, really great in this movie? Hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, she clearly steals the show. Easily. Uh, Hands down. There were some extra things that we had noticed when we were looking through the script, some of the stuff that he had added. And I guess that comes with, like, you would only know it if you've read the script. He yeah. describes Florence Pugh's well, performance at the end. As uh, or at least the characters, Danny's, who, by the way, Danny, Ari, <laughs> last name's Aster. Her last name is Arner. Very I, close, yeah. That Stern building Aster. burns at the end. It's in the shape of an A. Her last name's gone. She has a new family. I, I mean, there's uh, hints that he puts in the script, and he kind of said it in some interviews, and you can tell he's like, "I'm done with interviews." I, he had said it in his New York one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, when he, he was just at the Lincoln Center, I think, and he was like, I, I'm i at the point of the tour where I just hate myself for everything that I said. But he did say that uh, someone had asked him, is Christian kind of, a res- uh, is there something significant about a man named Christian coming into a pagan world mm-hmm. and like taking advantage of that? Uh, the fact that he then wants to, the Christian is seeing somebody else write their Bible mm-hmm. of these people and he's like, I'm going to take that. <laughs> which is a really big thing Ari did where he's like, I don't want to do it with Hereditary. I don't want to keep doing 666, Mark of the Beast. Because right, right, right. he doesn't believe in it. He's, he's like, I yeah. was raised Jewish to begin with. So none of yeah. that stuff means anything to me. <laughs> he says, but what comes before that? Mm-hmm. Because I've seen this story about the sun rising on the third day, but it was the actual sun. You know, so he starts looking at that stuff. The the Where was the Easter before Easter, you know? Where was the stories of a virgin mother in other way more prehistoric civilizations? And uh, maybe he's saying something there with that character of Christian coming in. But one of the one of the best parts that he does in the script is emphasizing how much uh, Christian's character just doesn't care. When she's crying, and you see yeah. it again in the movie, he's hearing the screams, 
and it's snowing outside, but he's taking his sweet time to get up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the moments that are hardest to watch are when he just dismisses her or belittles her. Mm -hmm. And it's a really interesting depiction of a a troubled relationship. Alina, did the movie work for you as a metaphor for a doomed relationship? I think so. You, you. It's one of those things where, and I know it's bad, and I wrote it in as a joke, but it's like, how do you leave someone that has no family? You know, after she loses yep. her entire family, right. like, what's it, a time it, limit on that? Like, do you even like, <laughs> like, it sounds to, so bad I, to say, but it's just like, if the relationship was doomed, but you can't just leave them there. You know, it's the yeah. weird tradition it's, that we have in America. Yeah, you're, you're, that we do that as opposed to in Sweden in that culture where it's like. It's very simple. You have right. to jump off a rock. Yeah. Your time is done. It is Served interesting. Your purpose. I mean, it's it's a hard, I don't know, transition, I guess, that you're seeing on screen. It's. What do you think about the ending when, like, she's when she has to choose between the two, and the and and the significance of that, specifically in the script, she says she goes from feeling like she's alone well, for the first time. Even that's when... why she's always held on to him. When we watched it, like, the first time, when I told you, I'm like, look, they're all screaming with her. She finally has a family. When you said there was a Lamont's class. Yeah. Yeah, yes. they, have that shared, <laughs> they have that shared empathy moment. Which yes. Is like which one she's of never the had. Craziest, yeah. yeah, which is one of the, like, kind of craziest, but most uh, just captivating and, and mysterious yeah. and weird If scary movie, movies were still being made, Scary Movie 7? I, would I be all would about that, yeah. Th- that would have been the scene in the trailer that they would have done. Exactly. Right. Yeah, easily. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's, you know, I think there's something significant to the fact that we don't really see her smile until that very last shot when, mm-hmm. you know, the, these relics of her past are being burned. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, she, she, it's, in a way, it's kind of the way we sort of sometimes reinvent ourselves after leaving a relationship. She's sort of a new person. Start, literally uh, flourishing I mean, the you, flowers you can uh, i mean going based off and building on that you could say when you end a relationship say i mean now we're mostly on twitter or instagram but before you know you had myspace and facebook and you would just delete any and all past history you had that with that person yeah so and it it's like you know it's like digital, you're killing you're de- them. yeah in digital wise you're deleting them and if you right. get rid of somebody like we were talking about yeah. this like you think about any exes that you have and for the most part you're not just deleting them you're getting rid of all the friends and everybody else around them as well. Like mm-hmm. they're literally dying to you. They're dead to you, uh, for for better or worse. That's that's the, the best way to put it. Yeah. So this literally is his depiction. Again, Ari's a person who, if he gets a paper cut, he's not going to show you a paper cut. He's going to show you a decapitation because he's like that's what it feels like. And and he's gone on record of saying that. So that ending is really euphoric because can you imagine not knowing if you can make the decision to break up with that other person? And it's. Uh, say what you what what he had mentioned. You had caught this. Why it's always been female protagonists. Oh, so he was always telling me like, yeah, he always has like the 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 female protagonist do it, and I'm like, yeah, because you can't. Excuse me, you never. And in our society, it's as terrible as it sounds. There's always a double standard. How a man cannot get. It would be so much more difficult from a woman, or it's so hard to believe that a, a the, that a man could get let himself be abused by a woman. But it does happen. But in this sense, how different would the movie be if we would have seen Christian be in Danny's shoes? You know, we wouldn't be able to take it seriously. But when you're relating to Danny, it's so, so much, much easier to like involve yourself in her world. You know, as trippy as it was for her, but yeah, it's so yeah. much easier that way. You get that point where he uh, blames it on the alcohol for why he did what he did. You know, it's like, yeah. I'm sure if you were in this, like, you would be seeing exactly what he meant. He's like, this isn't a ritual. This is an American relationship where a guy got drunk, she got one of his friends who had his eyes out for her, and he pretty much manipulated to bring her into his family, allowed her to flourish like the May Queen that she is, and made sure that everybody else, all the douche friends, were gone. Yeah. Which, I don't know, because again, uh, I like that we've been discussing it, you mentioned, is it a horror or is it a relationship? All we've been talking about is the relationship side of it. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the horror parts of it, what did you think about the lore that he built? I mean, it was an interesting. It was an interesting, interestingly full world. I don't know how much of it was necessarily from the 
the discussions in the movie itself, but mm-hmm. something that I was blown away by is how you could tell uh, how active the community around them was. I, yes. I love just seeing all the things going on in the background. There was always other people uh, doing something, <laughs> and, and it just felt like they were in an alive place in a way. He, he yeah. blocked them to a degree where Jack Rayner was like, I had no. I had to hit that. He didn't care what I did along the way, but I had to hit that, or we had to start the whole set over because it wasn't just me hitting that. I needed to hit that because someone else was going to cross my path over here who was just like an extra or something. It's crazy. He had a hundred page story bible with yeah. notes. All the actors are like, I I don't even just look at the walls. He kept telling me the whole movie was in the walls, uh, so I guess he put it there. There is. She was one oh, of the first to we, catch. Are we bringing up the the brace? In a little bit. Okay. What was the other thing that you had caught when you were seeing some of the stuff of the lore? We noticed right away, you know, the beginning of the movie starts off. With and it gives the, you the that mural, mural which the essentially is the story, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same way that the uh, period blood story gets shown to you before. He said he wanted to do it like an opera, where we all know what's going to happen, but it's about mm-hmm. the emotions. Again, going off of your point. Definitely. He knows what it is. He, he knows mm-hmm. you know the name of the game. He just wants you to feel it. Uh, as you build it up, you know, a lot of people have the theories of what if it was really Pele who... Obviously, planned the whole thing, but did he also plan her? Was that a part of his thing? Was that Pell's right. drawing, considering that's the way he draws? Was that his drawing? At the, was that his master plan at the beginning that he showed you? We tried looking for clues to see if he had anything to do with the suicide, you know, because he does hint. Uh, she, she wasn't talking the same. She it wasn't. didn't sound like her. But again, it, the moment you go down that route, it changes the entirety of the story as well. Yeah. But just keeping on with the lore of it, we're seeing this not only from the perspective of Danny. But the perspective of her friends who went there for what purpose? Archaeologists. I mean, they cast Cheaty because he's Cheaty. Sorry, anthropologists. So this movie is literally made for you to dissect if you wanted to. And you would be able to pick up on things. He just literally doesn't show you everything. Kind of like us, where he's like, I can swear to you, I have everything written right. down. Yeah. And it all makes sense. Well, why don't you tell us? He's like, because if you go to a civilization right now, they're not going to have a cheat sheet for you. Yeah. You got to figure it out yourself. <laughs> so I, I am intrigued for the rewatches. I'm intrigued for the special features. Uh, the man's earned it. Totally, yeah. totally. Uh, during the movie, the characters are taking hallucinogens. And they do a really cool thing to help represent that by kind of warping elements of the environment. So they're kind of constantly moving at least a little bit. Uh, what do you guys think of that technique? That was great. <laughs> I thought you were going to give it a zero. I was like, what? No, I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> no, it was, it was great. I like the, uh, it was subtle to yeah. the point where like once you fixated on something, you would notice it. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like if you were under the influence, it's like once you start looking at it, it starts right. acting yeah. weird. It's a weird thing where it's like if you're just paying attention to her, you won't even notice like, how yo, how long have those things been moving in the back? Mm-hmm. What right, tripped right. us out was with the flowers because we're like, oh, it's a wave. Yeah, it's a wave warp effect. Here. Yeah, that there was that, that one flower that was kind of flower, opening and closing. Yeah, which yeah I was like, was you can't do most, that. It was the most prominent of all of the like special effect stuff. But yeah. yeah, like you guys were saying, I think one of the things that made it work so well was like, None of it was, even though it was all there and obviously there, none of it was uh, significant enough where your eye immediately went to it. You had to notice mm-hmm. it. It felt like, a- am I sure I'm seeing this correctly? It makes and you I think feel as like, you're sober, are you, am I tripping? <laughs> right. And I think that's kind of like puts you more in their shoes because the whole thing with it is like, it's like you, you can't really piece together what's real. And mm-hmm. it, it, it's this really... I thought it was a really, really compelling way uh, of kind of giving you the character's experience and just super, really in- super interesting visually. I, I yeah. loved that aspect of it. Do you Especially, think there's any there's other just purpose? just that moment when uh, the older guy claps in his face. Oh, oh that was, oh, that was uncalled just... for. <laughs> yeah, there was one I, guy I in our theater. That was be... the first time he reacted. I was like, oh, so that's the one that gets you. Clearly, you're being screwed around with. And then his answer, why'd Why you did you do that? that? <laughs> yeah. I can see that being a gif. Like, yeah. A well used one. Do you see? Uh, did you notice an, anything else? Any other thoughts of why include hallucinogens in the movie? I've heard some people literally take away that thing. They're like, well, I didn't relate to it from relationship standpoint, but the hallucinogen standpoint. That's what the movie is about to me. Do you think that there's something to be said there? Uh, theory being, she was on the trip the whole time. 
Well, I mean, I think there's a And by the end of it, this was what she dreamt of, and it caused yeah. her to make the decision. I don't know if I have, like, any one answer for the hallucinogen specifically. I do think there's something to be said about the fact that a lot of people sort of view uh, relationships as kind of like a drug high in a, a way trip. where you, you get... Uh, you get your serotonin and dopamine increases and you mm -hmm. don't think about things in the same way because you just have this, this rush going through you. A and there's, a t to maybe help illustrate the type of journey that she's on, mm -hmm. I think uh, giving them these hallucinogens kind of accentuates stuff. It works for that whole like horror element that, that we're debating about. And also, there's the just the idea that a lot of people, you know, take hallucinogens to make life-altering decisions. Exactly. So. After you go through that, you say things clear. So I think next Sundance, we should get <laughs> mushrooms and just treat it like our own little oh. Sweden. So one of the things that I told Art on our second viewing was the amount of, say, what I'm assuming is they're bringing in people on a yearly basis. You know, right. they have a maid queen every year. There's more people from the outside being brought in, but necessarily all Because we don't know people... what is 90 years. They said 90 years, but there was multiple maid queens. They said annually. Right. Yeah. And they also uh, mentioned that thing about incest not being an issue. Yeah. Yeah, because they're bringing in people. And then also, what's his name's parents had just died in a fire. So they're not 90 years old. So, so my only thing is if, bodies. if the 90-year the ritual is just the added bonus of the burning of the nine people that extra aspect my only thing is all the extra people that they're bringing in if they don't like it obviously they cannot leave so there's gonna be a lot of bodies and i've seen enough you know uh crime scene investigation shows to know that when a body is buried mushrooms grow so i'm not sure if there's a tie-in to that on the why the mushrooms they always... that they're eating yeah are the That's bodies what, of that. previous people. <laughs> um, Charlie's clucks are Paimon's <laughs> camels getting closer. Um, no, that was one thing because there is actually one of the cards, one of the drawings is the foot needs to be in the dirt. Ends up being Chidi's foot, Josh's foot, mm -hmm. who yeah. Christian finds. He's like, what the heck? So Why is So well, what is the purpose of the foot being in there? What is the purpose of the bodies that are being built? They end up getting a lot of stuff from that tree where they do bury all the ashes. We haven't read up on, it's, you know, it's more of a theory, but if like ashes also cause that, but it is known that mushrooms do come out from it. And the only drug they had was mushrooms. It was very specifically mushrooms. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that the, the psychedelic mushrooms are because you bury a body, so don't go killing people and burying them to think, I'm going to get magic don't, mushrooms. Don't no. I'm just saying that the, two when, illegal crimes. When, <laughs> when a body's buried, it becomes like a good place for mm -hmm. like mushrooms to grow. That's the only thing. Is um, the other one a connection between Hereditary and Midsommar yes. that you've been noticing? Yes. We've noticed a couple of uh, connections. The one being, as we said, he tends to go for a female protagonist. Again, the third mm -hmm. one's going to really be telling because two is a coincidence. Back-to-back -back shot movies, of course. But yeah. the third Three's one, a trend. if we see a third movie where another Joanne, another Pele, comes by as being the I'm here to help you, I'm just a friend, mm -hmm. then it turns out that they're not? All right, we got a pattern here. If we get yet another version of this, uh, Hereditary starts off with the model of the house that it zooms into, and then it becomes yeah. a story, and throughout the entire story, you get the exact same look of the magnifying glass yeah. passing yeah, through the Yeah, Ari loves to do a slow creep on a window. Exactly, and what does he do here? Everything is based off of the drawings, oh, and the no, room, no, and everything no, is all drawings. Thing. Oh yeah. my goodness, that was uh, so There was one thing that we did enjoy as well, which was the eye thing, when he closes the eyes, and then mm -hmm. reopens the eyes the same way. So but another weird one we noticed, and that was because it was in the script for one of them. And we saw that it made it to the movie. In Hereditary, she wears an arm cast. Arm brace. Like arm a, brace. It's like subtle. It's, it didn't mean yeah. anything. Until you're watching Midsommar a second time, and they're in the middle of Sweden, and everyone's just wearing these costumes, and there's prolifically a girl with a huge old leg brace. It's, it's a, an ankle brace of some sort. Which is one of those things where it's like when you're very, very peculiar in your movies. Like if she were I gotta to... wonder what's up. Maybe it's yeah. nothing. She but it's one of those things where you got to toss it in first in case in case the third one comes out and you realize, hey, just want to let y'all know. <laughs> we jotted that one down. Time but stamp. it is interesting because, it, yeah, we she yeah. noticed it the first time and then the second time around. Uh, 
Because I was like, okay, maybe I maybe see it she all. Was she's like, keep an eye out for. Maybe she was just an extra. Yeah, maybe know? she was injured. Maybe right. it's not that big of a deal. But and I was like, maybe if the camera nothing with Ari is an accident on purpose doesn't focus on her foot, you know, from far away is when you could see it. But it it, it was it does it, it it's there. But I'm not sure if it's one of those things like, oh, they have like, quote unquote, modern medicine to heal them when they bumped into each other during their no, they're, they're no uh, May vaxxers. Queen <laughs> They're no vaxxers, uh, clearly. <laughs> if there's one thing the miss of the, the Hogar are, yeah. is that. But No, that was just well, some of the stuff that we noticed. I don't know if you had anything else. I mean, we already mentioned it, but the, the kind of horror kicking into gear with a moment of very real violence, not like a... Uh, slasher or mm. ghostly kind of violence it's it just a an act uh that is hard to hard to watch yeah you know also it's a comedy yeah oh yeah um it's a very funny movie I, uh, I so is hereditary <laughs> that face on your face it, it's a comedy it's a comedy on the script <laughs> and it's a comedy on uh on on the screen yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we're we're drawing these analogies between Midsummer and Hereditary. How does Midsummer stack up against Hereditary uh, to you, Alina? I personally enjoyed Midsummer more than I did Hereditary, but I do like Hereditary because it'll always hold a little special place in my heart. Watching it at Sundance in the Tower Theater, you know, mm-hmm. the whole audience. But I did enjoy Midsummer more. Hereditary is better than anyone who thinks otherwise. It should probably not be discussing. As the divorce papers come to the table. Oh. I, I mean, I'm with you, Alina. I kind of enjoyed Midsummer a little bit more. Thank you. I feel like there's a lot to chew on with this movie. You know, I, I'm really impressed by both of them, and there's maybe more filmmaking that impressed me mm-hmm. in uh, Hereditary. But there's so much going on in Midsummer, and as you guys have said multiple times in this podcast, like it's just a movie that you, you're eager to dive it's back dope, into yeah. and uh, catch new things because a guy like Ari is, is clearly somebody who has thought thoroughly through these things. His Edifying. worlds are layered, it's they're and textured, and, and I feel like that's one of the signs of his budding authorship it is just how considered every single frame is, how much detail he puts into his movies. The way the camera moves is so mm-hmm. deliberate and catches so much. I'm just constantly blown away by uh, his filmmaking. He, and I'm really, really eager to see what he's got in store for us in the future. He sacrificed his hereditary success to go straight into filming. He did. He had no time because he wanted to make sure all the notes were done. He was not here for any of the enjoyment of Hereditary. Yeah, he was, he was uh, flying back time. from Sweden to That's press. insane to me. So yeah. I hope he's enjoying this one. I, it's not making as much as Hereditary is right now at the moment, but, uh, yo, he's earned it. He has earned yeah. it. It is definitely a comedy. He's one of the funniest <laughs> guys out there. I'm excited for his third movie. He has gained my trust, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Any final thoughts? No. Well, so that's all for this edition of Let Us Explain on Intercut. You can catch more from me, Zach Shevich, by following me on Twitter, Instagram, or Letterboxd, at ZShevich, or check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash multiplex show. Art and Alina, where can the people find more from you? Um, I'm trying to look up my she Twitter. Doesn't know, she doesn't know her Twitter. <laughs> I don't know my Twitter handle by memory. Okay, it's just my last name and my first name, so I'm at Montemayor Alina on Twitter. Um, let's see where else I do post on Instagram from time to time and I want to say it's just the same thing with Montemayor and Alina follow her on Twitter instead she does do a lot of theories on there <laughs> when it comes to mirrors if you want your mirror symbolism oh I love mirrors in movies they even had some on Midsommar when she's having that conversation with him yeah mm-hmm. and, okay. it's great I love hearing I can have many her. she's got a 35 page paper on the Teletubbies <laughs> and the mirror analysis that say you can find me at let me LME Explain, at Let Me Explain channel, Twitter, all that stuff, uh, channels for the A to Z show. And, of course, you can find us every week here on the Intercut Podcast. Yes, you can listen to every episode of the Intercut Podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcatcher. I like Overcast. And then make sure you're subscribed not just to the audio podcast, but to the video feed as well on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash intercutpod where you can catch our bright, smiling faces as we break down the latest in entertainment for you every week. Find new episodes of Intercut 
on Thursdays. And please leave us a comment, like the videos, consider heading over to iTunes and leaving us a five star review. You know, maybe type out something nice. We always appreciate <laughs> reading your kind words. Like our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. All of them are at Intercut Pod to get updates throughout the week from Art, from me, from Alina, and from all of our guests here on Intercut. Thanks again for tuning in, and until next time, school. <laughs>